post sunrise, my day usually starts with our resident daughter family. I have been stalking them over the last few months. My journey with the otter started back in 2016 when I first moved to Singapore and chose to live in Pasaris. Back then, my first sight was a family of 14 otters playing at the beach, just 6 to 10 feet away from me. And it was love at first sight. I was curious and fascinated by how comfortable they were in the presence of so many people around watching them when they went about the business as if we were invisible. So here is a rough account of my journey with them. In 2016, six new pups were born near Changi that resulted in a pastoralist family of 14 otters. It was the largest pastoralist family historically known. A few months later, an otter named Aquarius from the family was in the limelight when he was rescued by Otter Watch, a citizens group of otter lovers and volunteers in Singapore from a rubber tube stuck around his waist that was literally killing him. 20 people spent three days tracking him down. I happened to be there to watch the rescue and release of Aquarius by this incredible group of water lovers. Having traveled the world for nature photography, especially across Southeast Asia, I was in awe of the nature community here in Singapore. 2018 was a rather tough year for the otter family. We lost two baby otters to illegal fishing cages at Changi. It was around this time the young Aquarius was seen stepping up to take care of the rest of his siblings. Otters are expert hunters and it's always a thrilling sight to watch them hunt as a pack in our canals and our waterways. Unlike out in the ocean, the canals are narrow and the otters use them to the advantage. They often herd the fish as a team and then catch them in the chaos. They have adapted so well to our shores and our waterways. The growing population of otters is also a sign of our clean waterways, mangroves, and also the abundance of fish for these otters. While the otters are busy fishing, our resident opportunistic grey herons are always around patiently waiting for a quick meal in the chaos created by the otters. On several occasions I noticed the herons appear as soon as the otters show up.
right around the corner, our resident mono lizards are lurking around the otters, waiting for an opportunity for the leftovers. These are very smart scavengers. They know that the otters would always leave behind some dead fish for them. I notice the otters and the monster lizards usually respect each other's presence and keep a distance. Occasionally, the younger otters like to taunt and irritate the lizards. It's very interesting to watch the relationship between the otters and the lizards. Especially in the Passeris Park context, the otters in a way seem to indirectly help provide for the herons and the lizards. This is something I notice time and again. Meanwhile, a fully grown adult male, Ben Teo, took over the family as the lead. As a result, some of the other mature adults moved on to form their own families across our Singapore shores. Moving on to 2019, the alpha female of the family disappeared and was presumed dead after several attempts to find her. Towards the end of 2019, two adorable pups were born to Ben Tail and the new alpha female. Personally, this was a joyful and emotional moment for me. Hard to describe in words. Passeries Auto Watchers and I tracked and watched them over the next several weeks. The pups grow pretty fast, and in a matter of few weeks, they learn how to swim and hunt under the watchful eyes of the parents. Did you know otters are not born swimmers, and the parents have to prod and push them into the water? to teach them swimming. Singapore is probably the only place in the world where we have a dedicated citizens auto watch community that watches over these precious otters that have made Singapore their home. I mean in the literal sense. It's heartwarming to watch people of all ages coming to the Passeris Park as early as 5.30 a.m. to track them, watch them, and some of them even follow them around as far as they can. Many of the regular residents, including younger kids who visit the park to watch the otters, can identify each otter by name. And over the years, I've watched this tribe grow. How incredible is this? It gives me a sense of hope especially in this age and time when the fight against global warming, biodiversity loss from destruction of forests, rivers and oceans continue to be a threat to all life forms on Earth, including us. I really don't know what the future holds for us. But for now, at least in this tiny park in the east of Singapore, the local community has learned to coexist in very close proximity to some of these amazing creatures living in plain sight around us. Ben Teo, the father and the mother, have done an incredible job raising these two pups. They are a lot more independent and can often seen play fighting with the siblings. We now have a family of seven otters. But it looks like the Passeris family will soon lose the only other female from the group. The female in the family has been secretly dating another male from another family that has been lurking around the Passeris beach. And the mother alpha female does not seem very happy about it. A few weeks ago, I witnessed how hostile the alpha female has been towards the other female. She was literally chased out of the group like an outcast. I guess that's life in the wild side.
I know it kind of sounds like a human story. The fact is, most of these creatures are not very different from us in many ways. <laughs>